Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new, I'm Stacy, and today we are gonna be doing a whimsical little castle scene. Um, I am working on Grumbacher 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. This paper has become a not favorite. It's not bad, it's just not preferred for, for me. Uh, so I cut up into the rest of the sheets that I have into these small, um, five by seven pieces uh, to practice on. And here I am inking in my drawing. I decided to do an ink and wash with a little bit of salt in the background and kind of make it a snowy scene. Um, time lapse this part because the inking, it, it, it could be monotonous to watch if it's real time. Unless you like that kind of thing. But the first, uh, took about a half an hour to get the inking in properly. And then the watercoloring was just, it's just the fun part, right? You get to play with color. But I wanted to do a little whimsical scene for today. Something loose and light and airy. I'm using a, what ink pen did I use for this? This is my favorite Castell. Artist Pit Pen in the small, which is S, which is like a 0.3. It's between a 0.3 and a 0.4 in size. It's not bad. I prefer a 0.5, but I couldn't find my medium. And the paint I will be using is my um, Mission Gold Magello 26 set of pure pigment colors. Last, last year, I believe, they came out with their newer set. And I um, decided to uh, risk it and, and buy these because I've been wanting I've been wanting the the pure pigment set to see what they do and how they'd work because uh, I usually use M Graham paint M Graham's my favorite favorite um, and I really am enjoying them they're pretty great paints they rewet really easily they have super vibrant color. And yeah, I really love them. Highly recommend. I think I paid $60 for the set last year. I'm not sure what they are right now because Amazon changes their prices so much. But you could probably wait for a sale and uh, get them through Jerry's or um, Dick Blick's or Cheap Joe's at a, at a good rate. Right now I am waiting. I wet the back of the paper so that I didn't have to tape it down. That's just a watercolor trick is to evenly wet the paper front and back and it will stick to the surface of your table. You don't want to do this on a table that is, you know, a nice wood table that's not laminated in some way. I'm working on a laminate surface so I'm not too worried about it. I'm just evening up the, the wet you want it to be evenly wet, but not, not puddly at all. You don't want there to be a, a glisten. You want there to be a, a sheen. And I am using um, Quinacridone Permanent Magenta, which is a beautiful color. And then this color is Cerulean Blue in the... And they mix together to make this beautiful purple. I wanted it to be kind of a dusky sunset sky. And I'm going to drop salt in the background. Pardon my phone. To see if I can get that snowy effect. Like it's slightly stormy, snowy, nighttime sky situation. Very whimsical and dreamy. And this, this is one of my things. I... I have a hard time sometimes laying down um, intense pigment. I, I know that watercolor dries a lot lighter and uh, I don't find that to really be the case with this particular set of paints. These these dry pretty, pretty vibrantly. And I'm mixing the two colors together on the page to um, make that glow run from the the magenta or the yeah the magenta up into the blue which I turn into a super dark purple here in a bit 
I think I mix a little bit of the dioxazine violet in it as well at the end just to give that super purple at the high high point of the sky I decided to drop in some more pure color there because I wanted the sky to be super vibrant there we go that's the mix of the blue and the magenta and I got some on my trees I didn't want it on the trees mind it on the castle I was undecided if I was going to leave the castle like a pinky purple color like it's white reflecting the sky but um, I changed that up later I decided to um, those trees are pretty sparse so the sky is going to reflect through them that was a last minute decision there for the sky and I have this container on my desk full of salt um, and I actually labeled it art salt <laughs> and it just lives in my my rolling cart so that I have salt on to hand I don't have to go in the kitchen and dig around and find it and cleaning up the water around the edges of the paper just so that it's not messy and I got a little white spot on the corner of the page there I'll darken that back up and then that was very very dark and this is where I really pop in that purple that dioxazine purple and kind of splash it around a little bit yeah I dig how that looks And this is just a super short um, practice piece fun I'm getting a little more salt I wanted some more fine salt but it settled to the bottom of my container I need to get a separate container for my finer salt um, I find just regular table salt and then I have the the chunkier like kosher salt <coughs> to get different effects in your skies and, and in your water or whatever else you want to put sparkle to yeah I really dig that I, I think I'm mixing up the green right now I should have kept that in <clears throat> the palette in screen but I wanted you to be able to see the painting up close as I work and I will move the piece up here in a little bit um, yeah still mixing the green I had a hard time getting the green to be the shade that I wanted so I mixed a dark a mid-tone and a kind of light so the dark ha is more heavy blue green um, and the mid-tone is more of a viridian green and then the pale tone has highlights of yellow in it and then I remembered I don't really need these trees to be super bright and vibrant because it's a sunsetty kind of nighttime sky yeah I took a long time mixing that color geez there I go <laughs> uh, I was just starting to think where in the world am I and as I'm putting this down I'm thinking oof that's really vibrant it'll be all right we'll put dark on top um because this is more of a spring daylight green instead of a sunset dusk kind of green uh, once you're in you're in might as well go for it right and a pretty straight line across the bottom because of the snow bank evergreen trees here and there there's some evergreen bushes up by the castle as well and then there's a little bit of evergreen like bush something down in the front well it's not supposed to be evergreen but I made it that way because I wanted to <laughs> it's my art and I can do what I want there I go dropping in some darker green to get some darker um, dusky kind of feeling and 
And yeah, I dig that. I'll just blot a little bit for some sparkle. Yeah, it's not terrible. And this is just a, a what more illustrative piece rather than realistic. I um, needed to pull myself out away from realism for a little bit because uh, I've been trying to practice clouds and landscapes and they have not been like, I'm not succeeding you guys. <laughs> so I wanted to pull out of that for a little bit, do something loose and spun, you know, a little spontaneous and more illustrative than realistic because that's the way I like to work generally speaking anyways but I've been trying to get um, a more realistic sky in my landscapes and concentrating on just skies is challenging doing clouds all the different colors and shapes that clouds could be and making them look effective I decided to paint the castle kind of a yellow cream color just to pull it out from the background and make it stand out a little bit. Uh, I didn't, but I should have put a little bit of shadowing on it as well. Um, I kind of let the ink work do that for me, but I could have gotten in there with some paint and, and done a little bit of shadowing down at the bottom of the castle where the bushes meet the the wall yeah and where the pillars meet and the buildings meet I didn't think about it till I was looking at the piece this morning um, while I was doing this I was listening to my book I'm re-listening to the zombie fallout series by Mark Tufo on audible he's up to book 22 I think and I the last one I listened to was book 17 and uh, yeah I just needed a familiar story to fill my day and I really like the series I like the characters I like the storyline um, some of it's a some of the descriptions are a bit much but um you know, of the zombies doing what zombies do. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not too bad. It's a really good story. I'm really invested in the characters. Um, BT is one of my favorites. The animals, of course. Um, add a little bit of comic relief. And yeah, I, I'm really digging it. Put a little more salt on because I wasn't feeling like it was quite enough. And then I'm dropping in, I decided I wanted to tint the snow because the white snow would be reflecting that skyline, Not it wouldn't be white necessarily. So I like to tint the snow a little bit. When you, when you look at snow, of course in some instances, daylight, full sun, the snow is going to appear crispity white to our eye, but... When you're doing a piece of art, sometimes it's it's beneficial to tint it a little bit the same color as the sky. So that's what I'm doing here. I, I got that blue. There we go. Scooch that up. <coughs> that cerulean blue. Skim that on the surface. There's a little bit of the magenta in there. And I'm darkening up those bushes because I realized they were way too pale. And I want to put snow on the, the bushes and, and evergreen trees with uh, Bleed Proof White. I have Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. It is some pretty great stuff. Fairly inexpensive. And if you get a little bottle of it, it's going to last forever. <coughs> Excuse me. I've had this bottle for, I'd say, I think since the beginning of the year this year. So about six months. Well, yeah, about six months now. Going into our sixth month here. And I've barely scratched the surface of this container of Bleed Proof White. It was like 5 or $6 on Amazon. Well worth the price. 
uh, if you're a pure water watercolor artist, if if you if you want your pure watercolor to be pure, you gotta use the white of the paper. But I just that's a lot of work, man. I don't like masking fluid. I, every once in a while, I will use it for like a serious finished piece that I want to be specifically a watercolor piece. Here it is all dry. Um, yeah, I took a little break and let it dry naturally. The salt effect, you won't get as much texture if you dry it with a heat tool. It, the salt needs time to absorb the paint and the water and, you know, do its thing. And when it's all done, you can just gently, you can either leave it on there. I don't ever leave it on. Um, or you can just gently brush it off with a soft paintbrush or I usually roll it off with my hand and just smooth it to the side of the table. And I'm going to flick on some snow so that it looks like it's snowing or maybe there's stars in the sky. I particularly think it looks like snow. You guys can let me know in the comments below if you think it looks like snow or stars or both. Maybe it's both. The stars are just starting to come out in that sky. It's kind of splattering around. I love to splatter. It's very freeing. <laughs> it's a very freeing activity. Just splashing paper or paint down on the page and then splattering it around is just, oh, there's something about it. That lack of control, the spontaneity of the mark making, I think is what really gets me. And using the tip of my, this is a uh, Princeton Heritage, I believe. Yes? No, this is a Princeton Velvet Touch round number 10. I bought this paintbrush at Michael's for, I believe, $20. Might have been $10. Between $10 and $20. <laughs> because my current paintbrush that I've been using for the last three years for my watercolor and gouache has gotten a little raggedy. And uh, it's a Princeton Neptune round number eight. I still use it. It's still a good brush, but it's got a little, it's less, it's got less snap than, than the velvet touch. And sometimes I really want that more control. So I, I'm really enjoying the velvet touch brush. And I usually just use the lid because I'm not tinting the, if I were, t if I were going to tint the bleed proof white I would use one of my little ceramic dishes or it doesn't need to be ceramic because the bleed proof white is um, re-wettable it's water soluble so you don't really have to worry about it like drying like acrylic paint does you could re-wet it you could actually technically probably put some in your palette and just you know, scoop out a glob and put it in your palette I haven't tried that Maybe I'll try that. See how that works out. But yeah, I'm putting like heavy snow and then I realized, well, if there's snow on those, then there's probably snow on all the branches of the bear trees in the background. So let's throw that in, kind of blot it out. So it looks more um, like bear trees. I'm blotting up some of the excess there we go. I prob I didn't put any on the castle either. I just kind of went around. They keep the castle pretty cleaned off. They're very diligent. <laughs> the castle's naturally warm. It's a mystical castle. Magical. It doesn't need to be um, cleaned off. It, it he it's heated. The snow melts as it hits the walls. There we go. See? Got a little carried away with that bleed proof white over the trees, but that's alright. I'm going to pop a little bit on all the bushes and make them look heavily snowed upon. Maybe it's super cold out and the snow is just, you know, that heavy. 
You don't have to. It's just going to be there until winter's over. I believe I go over the snow as well to kind of give it some bump. Give it a little more of a... I got carried away with the watercolor. Kind of push that watercolor back a little bit. And this is a little... The bleed proof white's a little bit opaque. But if you thin it out, it you can see beneath it a little bit as well. It becomes a little bit translucent. Yeah, overall, I think this was a fun painting. Um, just kind of relaxing into it. I had a blast listening to my book and just playing with paint and ink and watercolor and creating this little world. Fun, fun. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like this kind of painting? Do you want to see more of this in the future? Um... Yeah, because I want to give you guys what you what you would like to see, and this is my mixed media Monday. I don't call them mixed media Monday videos anymore, but generally speaking, my Monday videos are mixed media pieces. Every Wednesday we do a watercolor piece, and then Friday is just Friday Fun Day. Um, it'll be a pastel or a chalk or drawing, you know, whatever whatever comes to mind. Here's a little close up of all the action. I kind of dig it. I like all the textures in the sky. I think it feels very whimsical. And there we go. Uh, thank you for being here, you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.